Hello, I'm Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I spoke with Ginny Bedanes today, Director of Strategic Projects for Microsoft's Defending Democracy program. And this is our conversation. Hope you enjoy it. I sure did. So uh, Microsoft has been leading the development of an open source backend encryption project, uh, I think for a couple of years now, uh, think about it, uh, with the capability of verify the vote while keeping the ballot secret. Um, you, uh, your team successfully ran a primary in Madison, Wisconsin uh, this year. Um, and I, I heard from you that uh, you guys have expanded into RLAs, uh, risk limiting audit. So uh, interested to hear uh, what, how that is going. Sure, and thank you uh, for the opportunity to talk about it. We're, we're really excited about Election Guard, um, which as you mentioned is an end-to-end -end verifiability project within elections. And um, the pilot that we did in Wisconsin was in conjunction with a nonprofit voting vendor called Voting Works. And it was a, a really great experience. It was a little bit of a proof of concept to show that um, you can have the ability to track your ballot all the way through the process without ever revealing the details of who you voted for um, using homomorphic encryption. So it was a very exciting project and we hope to be doing more um, of those kinds of pilots and eventually lead to more general adoption of the technology across lots of different platforms within the, the voting space in the US and, and elsewhere. But regarding risk limiting audits, RLAs are something that we as a team have been tracking for quite a while as far as what we hear top uh, security experts say is like one of the best things you can do to secure elections is have an audit process after the fact and not just any audit though, any audit is better than none, but risk limiting audits are a really helpful way to do audits in a, an efficient manner um, and still have very high statistical probability that you got the, the results of the election accurate. Um, we sort of stumbled across a potential use case of election guard with risk limiting audits that we're still exploring. Um, but it's this idea of when you do a risk limiting audit, how do you do it in the most transparent way possible while still maintaining the privacy of the ballots? Um, and so some may opt to put the, coast, the cast vote records online um, so you can see all of them. And so when they do a, an audit, you can know which ballots specifically are being selected for that audit. Others argue, well, there are some privacy concerns with that because people could have marked on their ballot in a particular way or they could have done a pattern in which uh, potentially coercion or other privacy issues could accidentally inadvertently become public. So it's a, it's a little bit of a, a thought experiment of, well, what if you encrypted those ballots, put the encryption out publicly, um, identified which ones you wanted from for the audit from the encryption, and then at that point, reveal uh, the results of the ballot for the purpose of the audit. So that's something that we're looking at now and exploring as just a way to enhance these already um, really helpful tools to ensure that our elections are, are counted and, and are valid. From what I've seen so far as a, a, somebody who's just gotten into uh, understanding election technology over the last few years, risk limiting audits uh, appear to be the, the uh, only widely adopted or even more widely adopted, um, becoming more widely adopted technology and uh, concept out there um, of uh, that both encompasses the ability to uh, verify elections um, while they're in process quickly so that uh, not only does it uh, avoid fraud, but it also more importantly avoids bad scanners or other uh, problems that are uh, pretty much a mainstay of modern elections. Um, so, uh, it's true, but I'd add, I'd add there, maybe not widely adopted, but widely agreed upon. Yeah. And, that's, and the that's goal a is certainly wide, wider adoption. Sure. Um, and, and I don't mean to emphasize risk limiting audits over other kinds of audits, because I think we can all agree that auditing the process of our elections is incredibly important. And there are some scenarios where that particular kind of audit doesn't work for some election officials. So. Okay. You know, when, when I hear election experts talk about auditing, I think a lot of them start by saying auditing is good, uh, sure. risk limiting audits can be better, um, but it really depends on their setup. But it is also done after the fact. So it um, it's done once the votes are cast and in, but before the election is certified sure. um, in those cases. And that's where there's been a lot of questioning of what happens in that interim phase, what happens after election night but before certification. And I think a lot of people are just starting to become aware of the fact that election results are not done on election night. It's not over then. 
And even in a, um, even in a, a blowout, it's not, not actually officially over. The statistical likelihood of the end results being any different than what was reported on election night may be pretty um, unlikely. But the, the election's not done until it's certified. And so it's really important, I think, to have a step in there where you really get to do a validation of the results, not just counting and certifying, but actually validating through an audit. Right. So that um, it's important to understand that uh, the actual the process of, and I, I think the public's becoming a little bit more aware because um, it's becoming an election week, or at least in some localities, rather than election day, that the process uh, of counting so many ballots, especially when they're paper, which I believe is an important component of an election, um, that uh, it's it's very messy, very difficult. Um, there's a lot of technology inv uh, involved a lot nowadays, and a lot of people, and a lot of decision making that has to happen in a very short period of time. It's very stressful. So having RLAs and having your company's technology involved hopefully will make that all that much more better. But uh, uh, it's going to take a, well, it's an everlasting process to make it a better, more improved process. So. We'll just hear more and more about it, I'm sure, as time goes on. Uh, well, this is a good place to to uh, to um, hold this discussion uh, to a later date, and we can talk about it more. Um, I hope to talk to some more people about RLAs, and we can circle back and, and talk some more about uh, Microsoft's approach to RLAs and and uh, the encryption encrypted backend that you guys are building. This has been Sean Roberts with Lincoln Shorts, JD Bidanes. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you.